Assalamu alaikum my dear students. This is Faiza Ali. Welcome to my next presentation on chapter number 2 information network. Today we have a discussion topic is networking concepts in which we will cover uses of network, network models and few network standards. Now at first we will study uses of network. The first use is network allow users simultaneous access to shared programs and data. Simultaneous access means you can share different programs at the same time. The next use is network also allow users to share peripheral devices such as printers and hard disks. So network also giving the permission to their users to share input and output devices to one another. The next use is some networks also aid communication by providing tools for teleconferencing and video conferencing. So through the network we can communicate to one another and we cannot only see the other person but if we don't want to see the other person we can do the teleconferencing through different telephone lines. The next use is network usually include the capability to send email along with big attachments. So if you want to share something with your friend or colleague, you can share easily because of the availability of networks. We can share our images, pictures, movie clips and office files. The next discussion topic is network models. There are three types of network models. The first is client server and the next is peer to peer and in the last we have hybrid network. The first network model is client server or dedicated server network. In this network we have a server which is connected with different clients that is shown as node in the picture and they establish a network for communication. In this model server has a complete information and clients can access any information from the server. Let's discuss different features of this model. The first one is server controls the network and has the hard disk holding shared files, databases and often shared printers that all nodes can use. So clients can access any sort of information from the server because of the availability of databases. The next is the network attract a lot attention because a well designed system reduces the volume of data traffic on the network and response rate is also high. There is no data collusion in this model. So that's why it has a great response of usage. The next is in this arrangement server usually does processing and all computers can work together because all clients can access information from the server at the same time. The next is basically the disadvantage of this network model that is when server is off all operations will stop. So if we want to keep this model in running the server has to be operational for all the times. The next model is peer to peer network. All nodes are directly connected to one another and they establish a network in this model. They can share their resources directly as well. Now I will highlight some important features of peer-to-peer -peer network. The first one is server. There is no need of server because each node can perform the function of a server. The next is equal status. All computers have equal status in this arrangement. No one has control over others because each computer has the potential of a server to share data files. The next is distribution. All files and peripheral devices are distributed across several computers. In this arrangement all input and output devices are distributed among the computers to make work efficient. The last is disadvantage. In the disadvantage we first have lack of speed. Each computer is performing multiple tasks so it may reduce the speed. The next is lack of security. All computers can access information that may violate the security. And in the last, this network can also slow down under heavy files. The last model is hybrid network. This network is the combination of client server and peer-to-peer -peer network. 
Further, this network referred to a special architecture for broadband access networks where two different network technologies are combined to improve bandwidth. Bandwidth is basically providing the speed to connect one device to another. Here in the diagram, you can note that a satellite is placed in the air and different satellites are also placed in the buildings or research organizations and in the cars that catch the signals from the main satellite and spread to the world. Through this, a whole the world is connected to one another and they can access the information and so much so they can share their information with one another easily and within a nanoseconds. So this network makes a very smoothing and efficient working conditions to the users and connect the world to one another. Now let's discuss some network standards. The standards basically are the precise documents containing rules and regulations for the network that have to be obeyed worldwide. So while developing a network, we have to follow these standards. Further standards are divided into two parts. The first one is the geo network. The geo means according to law or regulation. These standards are approved by ANSI, IEEE, ISOI, EIA and Telcodia to follow worldwide. The next one is de facto network. De facto means by tradition or by facts. These standards are mostly used by the organizations worldwide and these networks rules and regulations are purely based on the traditional values according to the country and the organization that is required to establish. Thank you for watching my tutorial on networking concepts.